G'day folks. JD here with another update. Board came out great, looks fantastic. I'll put a couple of images up right now so you can have a look at those just while I'm rambling along. Uh, took it to club and uh, good reception. Really stands out to the yellow, uh, that desert look. There's a lot of green at clubs. So yeah, really stood out for that reason, I think. And uh, terrain was great, really immersive. I think there's something about Wild West that really sort of just drags you in for that immersion. Um, yeah, it was a great game. Uh, a little bit of video as well that I shot just going around the table during, um, I think it was about third term or something, third turn. Um, so yeah, that looks good too. Uh, it was a good game. The, the vampires came in pretty hard and pretty fast at the start there. And I, I think they got, uh, they got to the center first really. Um, and in doing so, they kind of got pummeled. It was a center objective. So, um, but yeah, the board was great for that. Everyone got, found cover where they needed it and uh, could sneak around. Uh, had a lot of options which way they could go. So, yeah, it turned out really, really good. So, um, yeah, just uh, here we are in the uh, shed. Uh, it's pretty late at night, but just uh, nice and quiet. So, yeah, no traffic going past. So, we're going to. Um, unhook the camera now and uh, have a little bit of a look at where we are today. So it's about a week uh, since club's been through, uh, since that last game, and I'm uh, starting to set up the board for a game we've got in two weeks. So um, let's grab the camera and um, we'll have a close look at the board. Okay, so here's the table, all painted up. Came out really nice. I'm happy with the road, happy with the colors. Uh, dry brushing came out nice and yeah very good we're setting up for a new game we've got in uh, two weeks there's going to be eight players so two will be in that little middle fortified town we're going full seven samurai or magnificent seven whichever movie version you've seen where basically uh, you get seven warriors training uh, a heap of villagers in this case we've got two teams the warriors and then the guardians who will be looking after relics and they have had time to barricade that town before overwhelming attackers will be coming in six of them coming in from deployment zones all around the edge of the table most of them on the corners are eight by eight inch there is a middle one there they can choose from that is uh, four by four and then that allows each one of those deployment zones on a three by three table to be eight inches apart which is very important because the game is uh, begins at night and visibility will be down to eight inches so hence the eight inches in between all of the deployment zones they can attack each other in fact i've given some stealth points uh, as part of the victory that you can only uh, you can only get victory points for this particular Dracula's America mission uh, if the alarm hasn't been raised by the middle centuries. So that means uh, that once that alarm in the middle is raised and the, the reinforcements come out and the sentries start acting normally, uh, then no one actually gets any points for killing after that. It's, it's onto the job of getting the relics and victory points for those. A couple of new buildings. So the train is gone and replaced with the telegraph poles, which I'll have to really weight down and get some heavy, heavy washers on those. Otherwise, I'll just remove them once the game gets going. Uh, they're just there for looks. New building, nice little ruin kit from Sarissa Precision. It's got a bit of a brick wall on the back, which is uh, about a chimney, a fireplace, and then a little trap door um, for hiding things. Not that I'll be hiding in something in there, it'll be pretty obvious, but who knows. And then right next to it, this one again from Sarissa. I really enjoyed this. This was, this was the easiest, fastest, quickest build with no problems. And I couldn't believe that it came from Sarissa. So let's take the roof off just here. And that's just the base coat. So there's a little bit of purple bleeding through that'll get toned down with some earthy colors, but it'll, it'll still be there underneath. As you can see on the hotel, there's a little bit of red still bleeding through, but most of it got earthed back with some dry brushing and then the red on the rails. So sticking to the vampire colors, vampire theme. So a nice little building with a, uh, a couple of windows at the back 
and door in the front. So what else have we got that is new? The stagecoach. <laughs> Bit of a story with this one. Um, yeah, it's good, it's great, up until a point. Uh, building it, it, all, it was all fine. And then we get to the little, um, this little piece in the front supposed to go on here. And that of course is the, uh, the driver's seat, the coachman's seat and where he puts his feet. It has two little sort of card tabs just there, I'm trying to get that to focus. And they're supposed to insert into the back of the coach. There's a couple of slots and those cards just slip straight in. The problem with that is, and I have done this right a million times, I've looked at the tiniest instructions in the world. Um, you can see that where the tab is on the bottom, they've gone and stuck the one piece of MDF in this whole kit is protruding out too far and it's blocking that those two tabs from sitting in. So I can't I can't finish that until I actually now have to um, you know carve that back. So disappointed with that, but I did just want to catch that on camera that the stagecoach um, from Sarissa Precision has a little glitch just there before you go gluing on those uh, that that front seat section. Uh, just trim that back. I think a lot with a lot of these kits really put it together without the glue as much as you can to avoid these kind of little issues that are always going to come up. And we have a wagon. So the wagon and the stagecoach are probably just going to help come in for some barricading like that. And this one will probably just go over on that side and we'll just zoom out now. And um, we've got that nice barricaded town in the middle which the sentries uh, have to defend. The sentries are on very specific duties. In, in actual fact, they can only move and go on lookout. They cannot take any shoot actions. And also at the start of their activations, the sentries from the defending players, one of them, which will be me, uh, have to roll off with one of the, or the closest attacking player and that attacking player could actually get to, to activate it and move it somewhere, which sort of represents the sentry sort of you know, getting a bit relaxed and not particularly being where the action is and stops a defender from cheating a little bit and saying, oh, they're over there and they're coming from the left and that sort of information is things that they probably wouldn't know in pitch black. So, so there it is, the new uh, table for a game we've got uh, happening in uh, two weeks at club. And um, yeah, I'll keep you updated and uh, Thanks for watching. If you liked it, like and subscribe.